joining us this morning uh, is Alan Patrikov. He's a managing director at Graycroft Partners and also a Democratic Party fundraiser. Uh, perfect person to talk to on Election Day. Alan, uh, good to have you back here in the studio. So Carmen says essentially the Democrats have been bad for business. I don't think that's true. I think, you know, the Democrats, when they were in office under President Clinton, created, what, 20 million jobs. Uh, and then we inherited a very, uh, President Obama inherited a very poor uh, period when all we did was have jobs decline. And I think President Obama has been trying to resurrect that situation, which is not, this is a battleship you can't turn around overnight. Right, but he's also implemented things that uh, other business leaders have said have been bad. Health care reform has been bad. The uncertainty over the Bush tax cuts, all of that. Well, when you say he's implemented these and they're all bad, uh, to a certain extent, I mean, a lot of people would say getting health care is a benefit, and that's a positive element. I think the financial regulations... Well, bad for business is what I want to mean, was what I mean, though. You know, but bad for business is a selfish attitude. I mean, you have to think about what's good for the country, not just what's good for business per se. And ultimately, uh, if it's good for the country, it's going to be good for business. I mean, there are certain elements, I, I grant you, that have to be modified or adjusted. But I think on the whole, uh, he's trying to make take steps that will be positive in the end for business. Like what? I think health care itself. I mean, I think get covering more people. You think longer term eventually will be a benefit. I mean, we do have a lot of people that aren't covered and that this uh, uh, administration is trying to be uh, to bring more of those people into the system. And there's a cost involved. I mean, you can't help it. It's inevitable. Right. Although there's talk that if the Republicans and, you know, when the Republicans... They're going to reverse it. They're going to reverse it, right. No. Well, they'll try to reverse it on a state-by-state -state basis. Well, was it a mistake for the debt for Obama to, to hang his hand on health care reform? I think, in, you know, it's easy in hindsight to, to comment on anything. I think the mistake, perhaps, was that of all the items that he had to deal with, he didn't, I think, recognize how serious that job decline was and, mm. and to stem that. And that should have probably been the first uh, effort to do whatever it could to stimulate job growth. Right, first on his priority list. Absolutely. Uh, Alan, what do you fear most? Uh, I feel do nothing. I, I am really you seriously worried. You fear doing worried. nothing. I'm worried that we're going to get a Congress that's going to be stalemated. Even without a stalemate, I've had, uh, as an outside observer, I'm not involved in the administration, I've watched uh, the stalemate developing. Even we have a Congress where the Democrats are supposedly in control, uh, how impossible it is to get legislation passed and to get something moving, whether it's appointments uh, that take forever or whether it's getting legislation. And I think if the Republicans win as many seats as people uh, are predicting, uh, I fear we will just have lots of committee meetings, lots of investigations. Uh, but and nothing. That's what, and nothing. But doing nothing. Uh, yeah, which is the most serious thing, I think, at this moment. This is a time we need to do something. What do they need to do on jobs? Well, I, you know, I have a particular self-serving objective, which is new business formation. Mm -hmm. I mean, being in the venture, As a venture capital capitalist. Business, yeah, you want to see. But it is absolutely clear that companies uh, who are in the early stages once they start business, they hire people. So anything that can be done to stimulate new business formation is going to be a very big positive. But you haven't seen any legislation that holds back these Most companies that you fund from... No, but I also haven't seen anything that would stimulate it until just recently, about two weeks ago, the president uh, took a particular part of the tax code called Section 1202, I don't mean to get technical, which has been around for a long while. And what is that essentially? It, it's a, it says if you form a new company which has under 50 million in assets that you are given and you hold it for five years, that you are you pay half the whatever the capital gains tax rate is, which hmm. is a real stimulus. And uh, that could be even greater, frankly, to stimulate even more so uh, investments. Uh, and it uh, unfortunately has never been fully used because it's offset. They gave it one hand. The other hand, it's offset by uh, the AMT. So the AMT kind of takes away min okay, tax, minimum takes tax, away right. what they've given you. But if they could eliminate the AMT part of that and may give you a particular specific credit, at the same time perhaps giving you an, a, an ability to write off your losses in the same type of company, right. it would have a major stimulus. It would stimulate more companies uh, then. But is that going to be taken well, away? or well, No, no. He okay. just passed... The, he passed this red legislation to increase from a 50% of capital gains rate to 100% any investment that's made between now and December. It's a very short period. So I think extending that would be very positive. Also, I want to mention the fact that 
it's been proven that companies that go public after the time they go public have the greatest spurt of job increase. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the records will show that uh, for going back very far. And we have gone through a period in the last 10 years because of the changes in the public markets, that IPOs for young companies have been virtually non-existent. If you right, they've been the languishing, yes. Well, because it costs more, uh, there aren't market makers, the, the, the whole system does, isn't conducive to young companies going public today, and the, that dream has gone away. And most companies in the world of technology are getting sold to other companies as opposed to going public. Right. So anything we could do to stimulate so that. So any legislation absolutely. to make it easier for comp small companies to IPO. Uh, ex tr it would have a tremendous impact. But of all the sectors that need help in creating jobs, technology is not really one of them, right? No, but uh, it, it's certainly the highest growth multiplier at the moment. I mean, you. I hate to pick on Google or Facebook or companies like that, but you can see how fast those companies go from 10 people to 10,000. What, what, what do you mean picking on them? You mean just no, signaling them out, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. No, I mean, it's right. easy to pick the, the obvious ones, but there are other companies that, uh, when they're in that kind of fast mode of growth, add employees, and I'm sure all those companies have open to buy, in other words, job openings right now, if they can find the right people, but because of the H-1B I always get my letters, HB, H1B <laughs> visa restrictions. It's been very hard to bring in to this country uh, people with high tech right, backgrounds. Yeah, I know one of the issues that you're passionate about, which I'm just reading about from Wil Wilbur Ross has also talked about it, which is um, he quoted the statistic about 90% of all engineers that are going to be working in this world are going to be in Asia in 2012. And what he's saying is that, look, we're educating all these engineers, but they're all leaving. Well, we it, need them to stay it's, it's, because well, we have this restrictive immigration policy, even right? Even more so, they don't come here in the first place. But yes, they don't stay. But what's an interesting phenomena is that going back to the IPO market, the IPO markets in Shanghai, Hong Kong, Malaysia, uh, every place in the world are exploding now. And companies are going public there because of this whole movement of uh, immigrants not coming here. They're going there. Right. People... Finding it, opportunities. It's, it's so interesting. It used to be 30 years ago. They all wanted to come I, here and build a better life, including my parents. And then now all of a sudden, all of these same, very same people are staying there because that's where the job growth is. You know, it's And the public an markets are good and they can tap into those markets. Right. There are many, many ready investors to invest in, yep. whereas we had it to ourselves at one point. Okay. All right, Alan, we're going to have to leave it there, but I appreciate you stopping by. Can I just say one last thing? Yes. Vo everybody go vote. <laughs> <laughs> including me, right? I, I, you I voted that. already. You voted already. Good for you. All right, <laughs> Alan. Thank you. Alan Patrickoff of Graycroft Park.